Hello guys, how are you? Welcome to GeoMind. In this video, we will start the Carboniferous period. This video is the part of the Geological Time Scale video series that I have been doing. I have already made the videos on Cambrian period till Devonian period and also on the Pre-Cambrian history of Earth. So if you want, you can check them later. I will provide the link at the end of the video. Okay, so without further wasting time, let's just start. So first of all, I would like to uh, describe this uh, thumbnail which I have put on my video. So you can see uh, there is extensive forest in the background. These are some reptiles or tetrapods you can say. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, insect, an arthropod. Okay. A centipede type of organism. And we will talk about this later in the videos. Okay. Maybe in the second part of the videos when we are talking about the fossils of Carboniferous period. This you can see is a dragonfly. Uh, its name was Meganeura, and it's one of the largest uh, creature insects you you can say. It was around 70 centimeter in length. That's about two feet. Okay, so we will talk about them in uh, the second part of the video, hopefully. Okay, so that's it. And these are the amphibians. So the Car Carboniferous period is also known as the age of the amphibians. So let's start. So from now onwards, I will uh, I, I would uh, include two daily questions in my video. So you have to comment uh, down in the box the answers of these two questions. So first question is which one is the longest period of the Phanerozoic eon? Cretaceous, Carboniferous, Cambrian, Jurassic. So out of these four, you have to answer the correct. Okay, uh, you have to answer the correct one down in the comment box in the second questions uh, the cambrian period is named after what okay after the cambria mountains after roman name of wales that is in uk cambrian formation uh, invertebrate fossil name cambria so if you know these questions please comment down in the box now first of all uh, we, uh, I would like to uh, take you to the geological time scale. Okay. And here you can see the Carboniferous sits between the Permian and the Devonian period. Okay. In the Paleozoic era, in the Phanerozoic eon. So, under the Carboniferous, there are two major series that is Mississippian and Pennsylvanian. Okay. And the boundary between the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian is 318 million years. Okay. And the Carboniferous itself spans from 359 or 360 million years to 299 or <clears throat> 300 million years. Okay. So that's very huge timeline. So let's start with the more detailed uh, chart of the geological time of Carboniferous. So this in this you can see the Mississippian and the Pennsylvanian series. Okay. And these are the stages. So the lower stages Tunisian. Okay. Then is Visian. And these uh, is nail like structure you see here are the GSSPs. Uh, about the GSSP, I have already talked about the GSSP in the previous videos. Okay. And the GSSP of the lower Carboniferous or the Carboniferous boundary. Okay. So Devonian Carboniferous boundary is marked by the Conodont Siphonodella Sulcata. Okay. So it's in France. The locality is in France. Now, <clears throat> Let's talk about some basic facts of Carboniferous period. So Carboniferous is the fifth interval of Paleozoic era. Okay, so it comes after the Devonian period and precedes the Permian, Permian period. Okay, time span is 359 to 299 million years. It's the longest period of Paleozoic era. And it's the second longest of Phanerozoic eon. The name Carboniferous refers to the coal-bearing strata. 
So it was named by English geologist William Conybeare and William Phillips in 1822. It is also referred as the age of amphibians. So amphibians diversified in the previous videos. Okay, in the Devonian video, I have talked about the evolution of fish. Okay, and how the tetrapod came into the existence from the evolution of lobed fin fishes. So if you want, you can check uh, that video later. Okay, and the most significant part was the high level of oxygen. The oxygen was about 35%. Okay, there was a significant jump of oxygen from Devonian period to Carboniferous period. So in uh, Devonian period, you can see the uh, oxygen was about uh, 15%, 15 to 16% and there was almost 20% jump in the oxygen levels. Okay, so we will talk about this later that why there was high oxygen. Well, obviously the main reason was the extensive forest and the lack of microbes at that time okay so next one is appalachian orogeny or it's also known as alighanian orogeny okay in the when we are talking about the north america hercinian or variscan orogeny when we are talking about the euro okay so when i am going back and forth between the hercinian or variscan you have to uh, remember that hercinian and variscan uh, are same and Appalachian and Alleghenian are same okay now so the two major subdivisions of uh, Carboniferous are Mississippian and Pennsylvanian okay and in Europe the Carboniferous period is subdivided into Denatian and succeeding Silesian okay so when we are talking about mississippian and pennsylvanian it's mainly we are talking about the northern america that is usa okay or canada the minor extinction event uh, is the carboniferous rainforest collapse we will talk about this in the later part of the videos okay so this was some overview about the carboniferous period so let's talk about uh, what earth looked like in the carboniferous so that is this is the late carboniferous okay so you can see this is Panthalassa, Panthalassic Ocean. This is our Pangea. Pangea was starting to form. So uh, first let's talk about the early Carboniferous. So I will take you back to the late Carboniferous. So in early Carboniferous, uh, we have seen in the Devonian period that how Euro-America was formed. And here was Gondwana. This is the Paleotithian Sea. The yellow line you see are the subduction zones. This is the Kazakhstan. It was independently floating. Then was the Siberia independent. North China was independent. Okay. And the Australia, Antarctica, India, Arabia, South America was all part of the Gondwana uh, supercontinent. Now, the early Carboniferous, the earth looked something like this. So there was a gap between euro america and gondwana and then the gondwana started to shift towards the euro america and euro america shifted towards the gondwana so this paleotithian ocean uh, between started to shut down so in the later part the pangea started to form and this is alleghenian and or appalachian orogeny or Harrisian or Variscan orogeny. Okay. This is the another image of the late uh, part of the uh, Carboniferous period. So the Appalachian Mountains were here when the Gondwana and Pangea collided. Sorry, Gondwana and Euro America collided and the Pangea started to form. Okay. So this was the start of the Pangea. So Siberia was still floating, Kazakhstan was still floating. So later Siberia will join the Pangea and the whole Pangea will be complete in the Permian period. Okay. So these are these are the Ural Mountains which formed after the when uh, Kazakhstan will collide with the Pangea. Okay. So we'll talk about this in detail. Now talking about the paleogeography. 
so early carboniferous that is mississippian uh, so euro america was in northern hemisphere in the early uh, carboniferous while gondomana was in south we have already seen and cratons of siberia kazakhstan and china were separate occupying high latitudes okay so you can see in this image these are the high latitudes mm, okay and euro america was separate gondomana was in southern hemisphere and the glaciation was there so euro america is also known as old red sandstone continent during early carboniferous paleotithian ocean began to close forming appalachian and variscan mountains so you can see in early uh, carboniferous this uh, paleotithian ocean started to close as this started to shift okay these two started to shift towards each other so assembly of pangaea was complete by the middle of the permian period and following uralian orogeny so when urals mountains formed then you can say the pangaea was complete okay so when siberia fused with pangaea so you can see this portion will fuse with pangaea during the permian time okay so when we make the video of permian you will see the complete pangaea here now <clears throat> So by the late Carboniferous, around 300 million year approx, Laurasia came into contact with Gondwana and closed the Tithian Sea. Laurasia and beware, Laurasia is also known as Euro America. So don't be confused when I am talking about the Laurasia. Okay. So Laurasia and Gondwana were fused by the Appalachian and Hercynian orogeny, which continued in the Permian period. China and Siberia continued to reside at the high latitude. Okay, Ural origin started at the end of Carboniferous. So this is a graphic of how Pangaea formed. So you can see in the late Devonian there was uh, a microcontinent named as Avalonia, and Avalonia collided with the Euro America. Okay, sorry, Laurentia and Euro America formed. Then in the Mississippian, the formation of supercontinent Pangaea started to uh, begin, and early Alleghenian or you can say Appalachian or Orogeny started, and the late Pennsylvanian, okay, fold belt started to form, climax of uh, Appalachian Orogeny. Okay, so uh, Appalachian Orogeny were complete during the late Pennsylvanian, and in the late Permian. Uh, even the Siberia fused with the Pangaea. Okay, and you can see the supercontinent of Pangaea was complete. So, very beautiful uh, graphics you can see here. So, talking about the paleoclimate, the temperature was 14 to 15 degrees Celsius, so pretty mild. You can say uh, it, uh, it was same as the present day temperature of the earth, but the atmospheric oxygen was 35%. So pretty high. Climate of various land masses were controlled by their latitude in a position. Okay. So very basic English. Uh, you all understand that what it means. So bulk of Gondwana below 30 degrees south latitude allowing continental glaciation. So bulk of Gondwana was below 30 degrees south as you can see in this image. Okay. So this is the equator, this black line, and the bulk of Gondwana, so 30 degrees somewhere around here, and the bulk was here. So glaciation was there, extensive glaciation was there, okay. And better areas in north started to form coal deposits. So as you can see, Carboniferous is famous for its coal deposit. So the wetter portion that is in northern uh, northern uh, areas, the coal bearing forest has started to form sorry about that so that's it for today uh, in another video we will start about the life of life during the carboniferous period and some very interesting fossils and animals that lived during the carboniferous carboniferous period and also the evolution of the amnoids okay so that's it for today video thank you please like share and subscribe if you like this video thanks